Hello everyone and welcome to a video that I can hope we can <laughs> ignore the background, we can ignore the rash on my face, like we can all just sit here and have a good time with Pokemon cards and not these distractions. Yes, it is time for me to show you guys how I organize my Pokemon cards into binders and also more specifically how I went ahead and organized my newest set of cards, Paldean Fates here. I know it's been a minute, it's late, you know, it just... Life gets in the way sometimes, okay? <laughs> my brain has been fried and frazzled this past month, and uh, I didn't, I, I messed up my filming and editing schedule, so I know you technically, if you watch all of my videos on this channel, I know you have already seen my Palde and Fates binder, and I do apologize about that. You saw it in my last video where I was adding cards in, you know, the additions at the end of the video, but uh, yeah, either way, I hope that's not too big of a, like, spoiler here. You're just here to listen to me chit-chat and watch the fast forwarding sped up version of the organization very satisfying i hope you guys enjoy it as always so yeah essentially you know i start off with my big messy pile of cards or i suppose it's not so big depending on you know especially with these like holiday special sets or whatever and there's not a booster box to open i might not have opened up as many cards in the first go around but either way i've got my stack of cards that i got from my first opening so for me it was the ETB battle between a regular Elite Trainer box and the Pokemon Center exclusive Elite Trainer box for Paldea and Fates. I went ahead and opened those up here on the channel. And uh, yeah, I've got my big stack with the hits at the top because that's how I do it while I'm filming that video. You know, I separate it out so I've got my big hits in a separate pile from everything else so that I can show those to you at the end for the recap. But basically from there I go ahead and sort everything out into their different piles. I've got one pile that has like my big hitters, you know, ultra rares and above that I haven't pulled before. Then I have got a pile of all of my reverse hollows, a pile for my hollow cards, a pile for my code cards and the energies, and then a big old pile for commons and uncommons. I do this because, I mean, it makes the overall sorting process go quicker since those all kind of go into different spots in my binder, slash also they get a different type of sleeve. So so with that big stack of commons and uncommons, I went ahead and I sorted that out first. So I go ahead and I sort all of those cards by color slash type, since the color is denoted by the type. Nope, other way, the type is denoted by the color. <laughs> And then I also go ahead and put those into numerical order. So I go ahead and sort by color first in the order that Pokemon does them. They have always sorted their cards this way. I mean, not initially, it wasn't by typing, but once they numerically put everything in by typing, I feel like they've always done grass first, then fire, then water, then electric, then psychic, then ground. And then I think it goes into like dark and then it gets a little wishy-washy from there. There's metal, there's dragon, there's normal, and then trainers. I probably forgot one or two here and there. But either way, I sort all of those out and then I go ahead and each of those individual colored piles, I then go ahead and sort into numerical order. I kind of do this by just fanning them out in my hand. I don't know, it, it it's easy for me, except when the piles are really big. Like in this set, it happened to be the trainer cards and then the psychic cards in which case I go ahead and separate those out by numbers of 10 if that makes sense so like if the psychic cards span the 30s 40s and 50s of the numbers in the set I go ahead and I sort those out that way and then within that I sort all the 30s I sort all the 40s and then I sort all the 50s I just my hand is not big enough I do have some larger hands but my hands are just not big enough to span the fan of that many cards <laughs> into proper organization so you know just do whatever works for you that is what works for me and then once I have done all of that I go ahead I mean sometimes I do my sleeving first sometimes I do that numerical organization first it just depends on the day the set what I'm feeling that sort of a thing so this time around that's how I did it and then I went ahead and sleeved things up so like I said ultra rares and higher if I have not pulled them before they go ahead and get the fancy black sleeve I personally think they're fancy because they're a little sturdier than the perfect fit sleeves or a penny sleeve if you will and I just like
like the way that it looks in my binder once those are all placed. It just looks nice and clean and fancy with the black background matching the black of the pages of the binder. I don't know, you guys can do what you want, but that is how I like to do it. And then the hollow pile and the reverse hollow pile, or if I happened to pull something like this one, right, I pulled two shiny baby mankeys. So one of those would go into a black sleeve and then the other one goes into the, like I said, quote unquote penny sleeve. I personally do the perfect fit sleeves, or I think they're called perfect size sleeves from Japan. I order them on Amazon in bulk and I just, I really like them. They, I think, are the perfect fit for a Pokemon card. Some people don't like how snug they are. I personally love that. So it's all just down to personal preference, but I go ahead and I put the hollows and the reverse hollows, and like I said, any extra ultra rares and above into one of those perfect fit sleeves. And then once those are all sleeved up, then I go ahead and also organize those by number. You know, usually I don't have enough hits to warrant separating those all out into energy type and that sort of thing, but you know, it just depends set to set how I'm feeling that day like I said but then once I've got those all numerically sleeved and sorted then I go ahead and integrate those hollows and black sleeve cards into the commons and uncommons that I had sorted numerically already since that's how they're gonna end up going into the binder and then the reverse hollows go at the very end of all of that because that is how I organize them in my binder is that I put the reverse hollows after everything so I will go ahead and show you guys the actual putting of things into the binder. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end of the video. Alrighty, we have things, things to do, mainly putting cards in a binder. How exciting. So I'm at the point where I just need a, a pen and I need some sticky notes. I don't think these green ones will be enough for all the things I need to write down that I'm missing. <laughs> So I have some more in here. I'll just have to open this up. So as you can see, I just get the uh, ones from Target. Yeah, just come in a multi-rainbow stack. Very nice. And I use those. I also normally order stickers off of Etsy from some of my favorite artists that make stickers for Pokemon. Um, but this time around, we have stickers from the actual Pokemon company. So I figure I may as well put these to use. I mean, we've got these three big boys from the three packs. Oh my goodness, do Yeah! You like the stickers? Oh, that's good. I do, too. Mm-hmm. And then we have these ones from the mini tins that I wish they could fit, you know, all connected together in the order that they go in. Um, but they don't. I would have to put them, like, sideways, I think, in order to make that work. So I'm thinking I might just, like, cut around the main portion of the sticker and have them scattered around on the binder so that hopefully they can all fit. Um, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. <laughs> so, stickers, TBD. However, they will go on here eventually, because what fun is a plain binder? I think it's not fun, but I did go ahead and use or choose a purple one to match the kind of theme of Peldean Fates. You know, the ETBs and stuff all have like purple and black and that sort of a thing, so I don't know. I just, I like doing that, but I just, I love these binders from Ultra Pro. This one I had originally used, I'm pretty sure, for my Scarlet and Violet base set, um, and then they had come out with one, a binder much later on that had Coridon and Miridon on it, so I switched everything out, so blah blah blah. I technically have used this binder before, but like, why would I just throw it away? It's a perfectly good binder. I'm gonna use it again for Paldean Fates. So, normally this is where I would tell you about Poe Collector, how I use that a lot of the time to uh, check off my cards and keep an eye on what I have and don't have, but just so you guys can see that you can do it without that, even though that is a free website, uh, you can just use like a player's guide from Pokemon that comes in the ETB, but you can see what I meant, you know, the purple, yeah, so, not the same color purple, but eh, blah, 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 blah. either way, um, in these player's guides, it tells you things about the new set, including the set list in numerical order, which is how I like to organize my cards, so this works out perfectly, and you can do it this way just as easily as you could on the computer. They even give you little check boxes, so if you want to check box off which cards you do and 
don't have, you are free to do so. So, to start off, we will take it from our pile over here, and we will open up the binder. I use nine pocket binders. There are a uh, four pocket and 12 pocket that also exist, and you just fill it up however you want. I personally, like said, do it in numerical order. So you can see here, Pineco is number one out of 91, so you go into slot number one. Wow, very nice. And then repeating that same process, we have number two here. So we can go ahead and slide Fortress EX in. Same thing with Maractus, and you can see I do like to choose up to three of the commons or uncommons to put into each slot, and any cards that have a sleeve around them, I choose two. I do this because when you just have a single card in these binders, when they're side loaders like this, I find that they slip out very easily when you're turning from page to page. So I basically just like to do this to bulk it up so that they don't slide, and also so that in the future when I'm feeling nostalgic, I don't know, I have more cards to choose from to look through. I know, it's silly, but after being a kid and not keeping all of my Pokemon cards type of thing, I wish I would have had more to look at. You know, it just, whatever, it's whatever. <laughs> But either way, you can also see that the next one that I have from this opening is number seven, this Charmander. So there are obviously cards that are missing in between there, specifically being Toad School, Toad's Cruel EX, and Despothra EX. So we will need to leave these three blank for those, but I also will put these in. So we have Charmander number seven. Do We have Charmeleon number eight. Inigo, and then we have Magmar, number nine. So we can go ahead and slide those in. And then for the ones that we are missing, you don't have to do this. This is just how I do my binder because I find it very satisfying and organized. I like to go ahead and write down the card that I'm missing. So Toad's Cruel EX. I also like to write down what number it is in the set because sometimes I'm not paying attention and I pull, you know, a Toad's Cruel EX, but it's from the other set that this card exists in. And I'm like, oh yeah, I finally pulled it. And then I go to put it in here and Toad's Cruel EX in the other set is not card number five. And so then I'll be like, oh, I see what I've done. I've made a mistake. <laughs> and then I won't be putting the wrong cards in the wrong binder. So, that is my reasoning there. Oh, and see? <laughs> Cask can count. We're not all perfect. Number five would be right there in the middle. Uh, we skipped over Toad's Cruel, so we will, or Toad's Cool, excuse me, you are not cruel yet, uh, but you are number four. I'll go ahead, make you a little placeholder. And then, last but not least, we have Espathra. EX, which is number six. So we can go ahead and put that there. And then that's that. We just keep on keeping on. Like I said, you can keep tracking your little player's guide here if you want to check things off. And then just keep turning the pages while you turn the binder pages. And then you can go ahead and fill it in as you go. So that's what I'm going to do here. You'll get to see the very satisfying speed through. And I, in real time, I'm gonna get to work.
Huzzah! I am done. My battery is about to die. Great. But you can at least see the HE Double Hockey Sticks that is this set. <laughs> In terms of illustration rares and ultra rares and especially the shinies! Yes, we have many pages where we have a two poo a bleh, bleh. I can't even speak, I'm so upset. A two page spread where we have absolutely nothing except for Booger Monkey there. Uh, yeah, this is just the way it is. That's a lot of shinies I need to catch up on, but at least we, uh, we kind of, we're getting there in the main set. We're still missing some random, like, commons here, but EXs, yeah, and yeah. Okay, but now you will see, I know many people put their reverse hollows on top of the original card from the set. I personally like to have their own separate section, because I mean, yeah, it's the same card as the original from the set, but it's shiny. I want to display both of them in their own respective manner, yeah? So basically with this, it's easiest for me to just once again use a checklist here and go down the line in numerical order, keeping in mind that some cards, like an EX card, do not come in reverse hollow form. So like this, we would go Pine Co. We would skip a spot for Fortress because that doesn't exist, and we will go straight into Maractus, even though this is number three in the set. There we go, focus. Number three in the set. Did I tell you or did I tell you? My battery filled up. Uh, so audio quality is going to be a bit worse on this camera that I'm using here, but at least it's a camera. <laughs> so like I was saying, Maractus, you can go into slot number one, two, even though you are number three, because Fortress number two does not exist in our reverse hollow form. So I just go down the line and try my best not to screw up, even though I'd say one out of five times I, uh, I screw up a bit and have to rearrange my reverses, but you know, at this point, I'm sick of doing sticky notes. I just wrote like a hundred sticky notes. I'm good. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Toad's cool. We will not have Toad's Cruel EX or a Spothra EX, so we can go into Charmander here. We have not pulled a Charmeleon or a Magmar or a Magmortar or a Nomo or a Camerupt or a Heat Rotom or a Charcadet or Armor Rouge, but hey, we sure did pull a Lapras. Let's go ahead and put that in place, along with the Frigibax. So, I mean, this is all I do, just going down the line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and you get the glorious speed group. Voila, that will be the end of my binder. So we actually just had enough pages. So this will be the end of my reverse hollows. And then we've got a few extra pages here for whatever I feel like. If I want to put some extra Black Star promos in here or something, that's usually where I keep them. But after opening my first two ETBs, this is what we were looking at, at least in terms of my binder. I do enjoy once these are put together. <laughs> Um, and I just love being able to look through them. I mean, some people, everyone does them differently, you know? I could have started my reverse hollows right after the final gold card in the set, you know? So I don't have these blank spots. But I like to start off the reverse hollows on a fresh page, personally. Um, and, you know, different, just different people do it differently, you know? Like, some people might have just moved all the golds onto one page, you know, instead of continuing them on this page, even though, you know, numerical order, but it just is what it is. Or, like, some people, maybe they wanted the four mythical ones. Like, why doesn't Ting Lu go right here with the other three? I don't know. <laughs> But they're your cards. If you don't want to do it numerically, you can do it however the heck you want. And I just, I have a lot to go here. Granted, I've only opened, what, like 20 packs at this point with uh, this opening here, or with this binder build, but you can at least see what I got. Hopefully we'll be able to fill up the main set pretty quick here since it is small, you know, under 100 cards, but time will tell. We shall see. The main thing I want is those baby shinies. Will I pull the no, absolutely not. But I will buy them as singles because most of these are worth less than the price of a pack <laughs> of cards. So we'll see. I'll work on it. And you guys get to see the process from binder build to, well, I suppose not completion. I don't know that there is a set that I've completed so far. Either way, I hope you enjoyed. Ah, oh, but how quickly I forgot. I don't finish there in a binder build. <laughs> I like to show you guys the addition of other cards. So I opened up the three, uh, three packs that they have in this set. I did that off camera. And now I can add in some missing cards and you guys can see how freaking fulfilling it is to add in anything. I mean, especially a common. <laughs> 
<laughs> like toad school. How did I not pull that? I don't know. But now I get to show you, oh, how satisfying it is to rip off that sticky and put that in the recycling. Yes. Yes, it is. It is very, very nice. Ah, let's do that again, yeah? Swoop. Boop. Ah, one more time? Okay. Swoop. Boop. Ah. Yeah, it does. It feels great. And then we can move on into this clobopus here, this beautiful clobopus cutie. And then we got nothing up until nest ball. Although apparently I organized these like poop poop ba doop and uh, I put the hollows right there. Let's see if I needed any of these. I have no idea if I'm missing any hollows. <laughs> ah, I do have this beautiful card to add in though, yeah. Very nice, not gonna lie. I did think I pulled that secret illustration rare when I first pulled that out of the pack and I saw the claws, I saw Charmeleon, I thought I had done a thing, but uh, <laughs> still, good card to pull. I'm glad I pulled it. Uh, but aside from that, apparently I'm just missing EX cards and some comments. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe uncommons, but we can at least add in a couple of new shinies. I mean, it's not a ton, but I will take what I can get, anything to help. Hey, we can at least put one card in on this two-page empty spread. Ah, feels good. Looking a little better here. Look how cute this Wingle is. Oh, I just love him. Welcome to the binder, bud. Ah, as well as the Lechonk cutie. Forgot that I pulled that one. In you go. Boop. We did get a duplicate Toad's Cruel, so as you can see, if I do get a duplicate nice big card that originally goes in the black sleeve, I put the duplicate in just a perfect fit sleeve since these are more uh, inexpensive than the black sleeves. And then that just slides right behind him. And then Ting Lu, the first gold card I pulled from this set. In you go, bud. Looking great. Ooh, and my sticky note kind of matches the teal. Very nice. But yeah, let's go ahead and fill up the reverses as well real quick. I can't talk while I'm trying to count, so one moment. And ah, uh, there we have it. There is the binder after some additions. You can see we're filling up the reverses nicely. We got the full line of ghastly evolutions there. And yeah, that's just, you know, how I like to do my binder, to feel satisfied and to have fun peeling off the sticky notes, enjoying the way that things are laid out numerically. You know, it just, it feels good to me. Feels good, looks good, I like it once it's done. <laughs> like I said, the sticky notes do get a little tedious, but it makes putting in new additions way easier so you don't have to pull out a checklist. You just know exactly what you're looking for and you find it nice and easy. You peel it off, put it in the recycling. feels real good. You're done with that one. So there is the binder after two Elite Trainer boxes and some three packs. Yay! Now I just gotta figure out these stickers off camera, and I suppose you'll probably see the way it looks in the next uh, opening of Paldean Fates. Hope you're looking forward to it. Alright, so yes, there we have it. I hope that was fun, enjoyable, helpful, a learning experience. I don't know, tips, tricks, we all, we love sharing them, right? I am always happy to hear that some of you guys take on some of my organizational tips and whatnot, or how I do things, and you integrate that into how you do your cards. It just tickles my heart so much. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's your binder. They are your Pokemon cards. You get to organize and protect or not protect or sort or not sort them however the heck you want. So that is just how I personally do my Pokemon card sets when a new set comes out. As I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any tips or tricks down below. Maybe I'll end up integrating that into my organizational process in the future. But for now, that is that. That is my Paldean Fates set binder as of right now. I hope you enjoyed it, like I said, and certainly just let me know anything you would like in those comments below. You can also let me know if you enjoyed the video by giving it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe by tippity tapping that notification bell down below and becoming a member of my casserole family, be it here on this channel or my main channel. I'd love to have you here, there, and everywhere. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, just stay well until then. Bye!